Hi guys, you welcome back to Web Technologies. We are still on Laravel for beginners. Uh, we're going to be introducing ourselves to form validation. We now have a form that has zero validation. Even without data value passed, we can hit the submit body and the form will try to process to the database. Just let's do that and let's see what happens. Hit the submit button. Uh, can you see we have this error uh, because uh, the if you notice what the error comes it says the integrity constraint violation not null constraint failed for post title that means you need a post title and uh, if you notice the values that have been passed in it's only passed in the updated at and the created at time but it's there's no title and there's no body so the post title is very important uh, in this particular. This is a kind of uh, security measures that Laravel, you know, gives out to its users you know, so that uh, MT from won't just eat the database, you know. But we need to actually handle this gracefully instead of showing this uh, particular portion to users. So we're actually going to be doing that uh, right in this move to the post create to go back to the form. So I'm actually going to teach you now to handle errors right there in your Laravel project. Back to our ID, which is uh, bracket IO. I'm actually going to talk firstly about the HTML file validation, uh, whereby you get to uh, add required in the form fields. Uh, this particular validation is uh, actually good. It's a client side validation and it works mostly on uh, the new operating, uh, the new web browsers rather, whereby you talk about the Chrome, the Safari, uh, the Firefox, but it actually doesn't work well in older browsers. But I'll first of all tell you, teach you on how to actually include the required. So we go straight to the create, which is right in the resources, views, We have it in the post, the create blade dot PHP. So we're actually going to uh, include the required field right there. Required. And also in the text area, we have the required. Save this, go back to the browser. Uh, let me do a refresh. Now, once I hit the submit button, you get that. Please fill out this field. It's not just going to allow you to submit an empty field to the server. Uh, this actually looks uh, kind of different in different browser. Uh, once I launch uh, Firefox, let's look at the way it's actually uh, displayed in Firefox, which will be slightly uh, different, but still not going to allow you to move further. Let's quickly look at that. Talk about the posted app. Post our posts. Slash create. Now let me hit the submit button. Uh, can you see? It's like slightly different, but it's still not allowing you. But this particular way of validation uh, may not be applicable in older uh, crew. Chrome or other browsers. So I'm actually going to uh, take you on the server side validation whereby you get to uh, add more detail to the validation process. Now let's go back to our ID. Uh, we'll be going to the post controller, HTTP controllers, go to the post controller. Uh, right there, we're going to actually uh, create the, the validate request, you know, before the post is actually being done. So let's quickly do this. We add this keyword, and we call the validate. Now we pass in the requests. 
method comment and we open the column uh, the, the brackets over this way close it right there now we're going to have the title so we we'll specify required Going to have the body we also specified required for the body that's fine so we save it right there and we go back to the create blade to take away the required uh, so that's actually going to use the server side validation save this out so let's get to let's go back to browsers let's refresh click on submit i noticed that nothing was submitted you know it actually didn't uh process the form now we need to actually catch up the error so that we are actually going to see what happens you know once a user just press and submit and nothing comes up we might think something else is happening but we need uh, the errors message to uh, pop out gracefully to the user so that the user will particularly know which portion of the field or which, which portion of the input or text area that triggers an error and what to do to fix those errors so we'll go back to our text editor now we're going to create uh, a sort of form error field right in the create.blade which is over here uh, first of all let's wrap this button with uh, the diff class I'm gonna do it this way diff give the class give a form group This way now the corresponding close it div will actually be sitting somewhere here. that's fine tab. now let's create the errors uh we're also going to have a form group the div. actually sits right inside the form uh, let's give it a class. Form. Sorry. Form group. That's cool. Now uh, we're going to pass the class for the Is actually going to be the alert. We have the alert danger. We have the closing div. Inside here, we're going to give an unordered list. You have. Right inside the unordered list. We have the for each to actually look through the error callback for each this space passing errors. So we need to get all error to the all just this way. Uh, say as error it's fine with that let's add the end 
for each. Slightly closer. So we're going to have a list, and inside the list, creates and inside there we have the error. Just this way. Uh, we can uh, actually make it uh, uh, work. So let's let's try to go back to our browser and try it out. Refresh. You notice we have the red button, uh, the space for the error. We're going to take this out later on, but well, let's just hit the submit. Can you see the title field is required while the body field is required? Even when we refresh to have no uh, passing or when we didn't submit the button, we see how this uh, showed. So we're going to actually use an if statement to control that. Let's go back to our text editor. So before So let's do that quickly. Uh, we need to add an if statement over here. Like add if. Now we get a count. Pass the errors. Just this way, and we have corresponding because it must be corresponding and if starts just this way so let's get an invitation that's fine let's save this back to the browser so once we refresh that takes away that particular red uh, portion so there should be no validation when the form is fresh but once you click on the submit button now the validation should trigger so you can see this we have the title field is required and the body field is also required so you can actually uh trick this maybe probably you want to actually make this be in a different uh, uh in a different file entirely probably you can actually cut this out. Cut it out. Uh, you create a view for it. You move back to the posts. You can actually have it as a or add it in the layout. Let's add it in the layout. Call it new file errors dot blade. PHP. So we did this way, paste it right there, and you now need to include this right inside the create plate. So you do something of this nature. Include. Include. Now call on the layout to pass single quote layout dot errors just the space save it right there layouts that's there should be no typo so that it will be calling the wrong path so let's move back Refresh. Can you see that? We submit. We still have the validation right inside. So this is how to go from there. Uh, at least create some server-side validation in your forms while using Laravel 5.4.
and uh, you can also include uh, the client and the server side together uh, to validate forms so that doesn't mean that you just need to do only the server side alone and leave the client side you know you can decide to have it together it's actually going to make the security of your form more robust thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout this uh, tutorial and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel stick by we still have another package right there in laravel 5.4 for you and don't go anywhere have a blessed time Bye -bye.